right to do this. <laughs> All right. What I'm showing is that people in Barbados, they laugh seriously at land shape because of class differences or because of one of that. But this is an institution that survived since 1863. The Barbados Mutual was founded in 1841. I'm going to enforce all this in a little bit. In 1841, to save the planters from the hands of the British merchants. One of the differences between Barbados and Jamaica, and Barbados and the rest of the Caribbean territories, is the fact that the owners of the plantations lived in Barbados. In 1967 68, when most of the plantocracy started to run from Barbados because they couldn't stand the idea that, that, that we have to answer the black people in a government that was independent of Britain. They started selling out. They sold fantastic furniture. If you look at Caribbean style, and you know the book, look at it. I'm going to be paid to go out loop and look at the rocking chairs. All of them is based on rocking chairs. But if you know the style of furniture, you know that is Asian furniture. And there was a French woman, I remember, very well, buying up most of the furniture at the time and shipping it to Martinique, some went to France, some went to Bordeaux, and so on. And um, I remember going to a sale at Buckley House, on which there was a bedroom table that sat 32. And to match, it had the incentives, plus solid silver cut the whole of it. That we never you know, or sweat, nor tears. But again, the point I'm making. We take pride in the fact is that this country of ours has survived, we're independent, we struggle still to you know, balance things. But it is our country. I cussed me the other day. As you would, that's, that's a family thing. Because I came across on the internet a study done by the IEC on trying to manufacture furniture. She, oh, she really didn't know that movie, but she had commissioned the IEC to have a for a German man, and the German man came down here and talked about the food issues. As if we could compete with China, Indonesia, Turkey, and all the open mass. When you go home, go for your internet. If you have a iPad, open it, then you get a look for Barbados furniture. And you can see what is being sold in, in big stores in the United States as Barbados furniture. Laminates. And I tell you these laminates. But I say something, you know, again, I was talking about industries and Barbados industries. And so I'm talking too long. Okay? I can, I can, I can come to you. We have a tech. We have a tradition of jobs like Professor Lab, I can be like, like Uncle George Marshall. We like can call quite a few people Griffith. Two Griffiths used to run big furniture stores in Barbados. I told you the repository that exists got my own or building out with this national trust. And I wrote, when I was coming to bring Chata to law school, I wrote the head of the Polytechnic, his deputy, the head of the, the furnishing department, and somebody else, the four of them I wrote, asking them to meet with me to discuss the manufacturing of Barbados furniture. This is what I wanted to propose to them. 
that every student that comes out of Woodward must produce a copy of a piece of Barbadian furniture as part of his graduation. And that they can live with that furniture, a price on it, plus a shipping cost for persons who come to Barbados and want to buy a printed tool. And that would be good. But the point is, there's also an information IT department, and there are scanners that can scan every single one of those furniture and do a pull out and design exact design for it that it would work in the and the reason that, I have two reasons for it. One is, I had a meeting with Archbishop Holden, with my, my, my close creative people, about the possibility of a spiritual university of Cardinal College, 790 years, unused, abused. Then I guarantee for the other day for me. And when I went at Marcus Lashley's house, who had asked to organize the meeting, and I passed through Marcus Barrett, I see all this furniture, tools, and all that. I said, Marcus, what are you doing? He's a psychologist as well as a Anglican priest. He said, Man, my hobby is making furniture, and I make chairs, and so on. And that was the second action. And then there was a young boy who headed up. U.S. Barbados Association at Moon and that they met. He did geology. He's not working in the government as a geologist. At 15, he was making reproductions of Barbados and furniture. So, but here, cultural industries. I don't know what the industries and what the workers are. I want to ask Cha Cha. To read the follow through to the first thing that I'm going to do. I'm going to run it there. And take some questions from you if you have any. And that's a lot. So you have something. Lanchi, make it live by a bond. The Barbados Mutual Assurance Company is the oldest indigenous institution in Barbados. Founded in 1841, it was established to protect planters from the vicissitudes of the sugar industry and predatory hustlings of British merchants. The Barbados Lanche Movement was founded in 1865 and is the oldest indigenous social organization in Barbados. It was established to protect former slaves and their communities from the vicissitudes of the sugar industry, particularly with perennial hard times. Like the mutual, the Lanche believed in the pooling of resources to provide assistance for its members during sickness and at death. However, it also provided members with a sense of well-being, a sense of community, and a sense of dignity. As we approach the beginning of the 21st century, we see the mutual continuing continuing to go from strength to strength, while the land shrink is shrink shrinking and steadily withering away. In our previous article, I raised the specter of this tragedy, but that best describes what we are witnessing. The land shift attracted people like Dr. Hugh Gordon Cummings, who became Premier of Barbados in the late 1950s, Sir Menzio Cox, member of the House Assembly and one of the first ministers of the BLP government, during the 1950s, Sir Clyde, Sir Clyde Gallo, one of Barbados' most outstanding community developers, and Mrs. Gertrude Eastman, businesswoman and member of the House of Assembly. No country can afford to lose patrimony with this type of legacy. Last week, I spoke, to the, I spoke of the landship running around on a reef. It is time to salvage it and put it on the dry dock. I am proposing that the landship movement be redesigned as a youth movement to be installed in every school, primary and secondary in the island. Such an organization should have the following components. One, the structural composition of the landship should be preserved, adding additional ranks with badges and medals for achievement similar to scouting and guided guiding. Uniforms may vary according to school. 
The school may use a wider combination of designs and colors, especially school colors. Three, traditional set sequences of dance movements should be maintained with provisions for variations within these movements. This is to facilitate competition in the future. Four, fees must be charged for membership. These fees, along with other contributions and receipts from fundraising activities, must be run by the members of the landship, headed by the bursar of the landship, meeting terms, Susu may be a part of the organization. An advisor from the school staff or banking institution would assist. Traditional music such as tuk drumming, blue playing, and percussion must also be taught as an adjunct of the landship. A landship should carry the name of the school. Seven, a patron should be appointed for the organization. And lastly, there should be five categories for the landship organizations. Pond boats, Moses, saints, lighters, and shunas. A permanent secretariat will be required to oversee the development and maintenance of this new landship organization. A staff, a staff of three persons attached to the NCF would man this secretariat and be responsible for teaching the dance, music, and organizational aspects of the landship. I believe that government should appoint as soon as possible a non-partisan committee to plan and develop this concept to its fullest. In addition to representation of political parties, the following should be represented. The Landship Movement, the Defense Force, the Ministries of Education, Culture and Youth Affairs, the Association of Bankers, the BSTU, the BUT, the Secondary and Primary Head Teachers Associations, the NCF, the Ministry of Culture, the Community Development Department and the Mutual. Finally, I would like to suggest that a pilot project of 15 schools be implemented in 1998. Three in each category, that is, on boats, Moses, Saints, Lighters and Shumos. National development is not just about buildings and roads and airports and harbors. It is not just about language and maths and what was and when. It is not just about modernity and the future. It is not about aping and mocking others and fashioning oneself in someone else's image. National development is about us, about our own physical and spiritual well-being. Modern culture values, documentation and records of achievement. Common folk are seldom documented. Occasionally, a song may extol the virtues of a community hero. It is remembered from time to time, by and large, however, these names are these names and forgotten ancestors of ours are condemned to be forgotten. The landship sustained, the landship sustained many a battered spirit and comforted many souls when there was nothing else. To survive 134 years from its origins in 1863 with little help from government or successful financial institutions is testimony of its strength and importance. Only some churches and parliament can claim such longevity. My plea goes out to all Asians. Please, do not let the landship die. Maybe you don't like my suggestion and you have a better one. I don't care. Put it forward. Don't let us save the pearls of our past. I mean, but let, sorry. But let us save the pearls of our past. Mr. Arthur, you are from a mile and a quarter. I am sure you were aware as a boy the importance of the landship over in Rose Hill, the Queen Victoria and the top man, the Ben Hill sportsman, your recent parades of defining a row for Barbados in the Americas can only be sustained by people who are stoutly sure of themselves. The Barbados landship movement has served us well. Let us carry it into the future with assurance and dignity. Make it live forever. <laughs>